Hi guys, ignore the fucked up mess that is me right now. Um, I'm very tired. It is not that late. It is actually 9.25 p.m. on a Saturday and I'm already home in my Airbnb, but I'll get to why I'm home so early. I just wanna come up here and kinda give you guys a play-by-play -play of the last two days that I've been in Miami because I haven't been vlogging as much as I should have. There's a lot of footage. I have a lot of footage of a lot of things. I just don't have any explanation for the footage that I'm gonna show you guys. So I figured for this, this vlog, I would give you guys a little play-by-play -play of the things that we've been doing here in Miami. So, without further ado, let me go through the last two days in Miami. I don't know why I sounded French. That was not my intention, but somehow it just came out like that. We're gonna roll with it. We're gonna roll with the punches because I'm tired and I'm tipsy and we'll get to why I'm tired and why I'm tipsy in a minute. I actually do want to check if the microphone is on because I'm not entirely sure that it's on. You know what? We'll just go with the flow. We're gonna trust that it's on. Let me actually, let me, let me, let me see here. Oh my God, are you on? I can't tell. Yes, microphone is on. Let me actually fix this angle because it's not cute. It's not Gucci, guys. This angle is not fun and fresh. Okay, let's start with what we've done in Miami the last two days. Friday, I wake up bright and early, very early actually. I woke up like at seven o'clock in the morning, which was five o'clock Phoenix, Arizona time. My older brother had me up at fucking seven o'clock in the morning, 5 a.m. Arizona time. I'm not used to being up that early. So anyways, we wake up, sun is up and shining. It is fucking hot. It is muggy. It is wet. It is disgusting. Arizona heat ain't got nothing on Miami heat. And now I realize that's why they're called the Miami heats. Because it's fucking hot and humid and muggy and gross. My hair, let me tell you, my hair has suffered. My hair has suffered since I've been in Miami. All the humidity and all of the wet, moist, everything has fucked my hair. Like, I wake up, guys, and I wake up like with my hair like... There's a picture on my Instagram. If you guys have not seen my Instagram, you guys should go on my Instagram and check out the pictures that I've been posting of my trip to Miami. There's one that I posted on Friday morning of me just waking up. Literally, my bed hair, my bed head in Arizona is nothing compared to the bed head that I have experienced in Miami. Go to my Instagram, Dennis Garcia, check that photo out. And while you're there, check all my other pictures. Guys, my Instagram game the last three days has been really fucking lit. And I have a few more pictures that I'm gonna be posting over the next couple of days, but um, I took some great pictures and you should go watch them because I think you would really like them. And once you get there and you see the pictures, make sure to follow me if you're not following me and make sure to like heart all of my pictures so that you can show me love so I can get more likes because it feeds my ego. <laughs> Anyways, Saturday morning, we wake up. It's muggy, it's hot. Uh, we go get breakfast at this place called Wynwood Diner. It is in the bougie Wynwood Art District. And if guys don't know about Wynwood, Wynwood is the art capital of Miami and you might even say the world. The entire city of Wynwood is full of art from all different types of artists. The entire city is covered. Buildings, buildings guys, high rise buildings in Wynwood and buildings, just regular buildings, are covered in art. It's fucking beautiful. I love Wynwood. So first, first we're gonna show you guys a clip of all the art we saw in Wynwood. So roll the montage, Dennis. So obviously you guys can see how amazing and how beautiful Wynwood is, especially on a Friday morning when there isn't anybody up that early and walking around Wynwood. Uh, we hit up the Wynwood Diner. I'm gonna be saying Wynwood a lot, so prepare yourself for the Wynwood counter. I'm not gonna do a counter up on my channel. I'm not gonna put a little ding in the corner. I'm too tired. I don't know how I'm gonna feel once I edit this. Maybe while I'm on the plane editing this, on my way back from, from Denver or Miami, I might put a little ding, I might not, who knows, I don't. We get to the Wynwood Diner, which by the way, I thought was going to be like a cute little diner where like, it's kind of like homey and kind of like, you know, when you watch a, a film or like a movie and you see the scenes in the diners and they're like very like, kind of like disheveled and kind of like not the best looking, but the food is really amazing. I thought it was gonna be like that. No, we get into this place, bougie as fuck. Literally, looks like I stepped into a fucking Joy Graceffa book. There's like 
like plants everywhere. It's all black and gold. There's a little couch sitting area. I ordered the French toast, which I thought were just gonna be like regular French toast. I literally thought I was just gonna sit there and eat some regular old French toast. And so I ordered my French toast and they're literally the fanciest fucking French toast that I have ever ordered. One, they were like $10, $10 French toast, which is not that bad. Two, did not come with any sides, didn't come with any sausages or eggs or hash browns or ham or bacon and I was fucking shook. When I go to fucking Denny's, they give me my sides. When I go to Encounter, mind you, I gotta order my sides, but I still get my sides. You think they had sausage over there? No. They had no fucking sausage. They had eggs, but they were all fancy, like Eggs Benedict and shit. And I was like, I really don't want Eggs Benedict. I just want some fucking normal eggs, but they didn't have normal eggs. So I get my French toast. They're fucking good. They are literally, literally like churros. I think they're fried French toast, actually. They had a crispy texture on the outside. They tasted like cinnamon donuts. Fried cinnamon donuts with syrup. After we had breakfast, we went to the wall that my brother was working on and is working on and is painting on in the city of Overtown, or the town of, of Overtown, which is a block away from Wynwood. And we start painting and shit. And then I realized that there, they are filming a movie in the street that we're painting on. I come to find out that that movie is John Leguizamo's new movie. And so my brother just casually says, yeah, oh uh, yeah, I forgot. They're filming the new John Leguizamo movie. There were times where like I was trying to film my brother, but they were trying to film a scene. So I had to stop filming my brother so they can film their scene. My brother is literally like, yeah, if you want to go, you can go to the set, you can watch them film, you can be up where the actors are at, you can explore around the area, you can you can watch them film the scene like two feet away from you. You just can't be one in the shot, you can't film anything, you can't take pictures of anything, but you can go and check it out. So me, being who I am, I'm like fuck yeah, let's go check it out. My brother comes with me and he sees the director of the movie, the director who is directing this movie. And he literally walks up to him, taps him on the shoulder and goes, oh hey, so and so director's name, what's up? And then the, the director goes, oh hey Francisco, how's the painting going? And I'm like, you did not tell me that your artwork, your mural was gonna be in one, John Leguizamo's new movie, two, that I was going to be on set of a movie, and three, that right there is John Leguizamo directing right over there. Oh my fucking god. And so I'm like trying to like not freak out. I'm like, I'm I'm not the type to freak out. I don't really get starstruck, honestly. I I I don't. I don't get I don't get star starstruck um, as I'm stuttering about how I don't get starstruck. But I just I find that there's this like magic in movie making. I find that there's this like I don't know, I have a passion for photography and I have a passion for film, so like eventually I would like to get to like make my own stuff. They were filming two scenes that day. I, I, I'm not allowed to talk about them um, because the director told me himself that um, I couldn't film, that I couldn't post anything on social media about the film. Like I could talk about it, I could tell you like what it's about and what it's called because as it goes, he actually did a little clip for my channel where he briefly describes the scene, um, but I'm not allowed to like show footage from the scene or anything of the scene um, as they are like working on it. After that whole entire thing, and I tell my brother, hey, um, are we allowed to cross across where they're filming so I can go and get something to drink at the store that's like across the street? And he was like, if they're not filming, yeah, you can. So I checked, they were not filming, they were preparing for the next scene or whatever next shot they were trying to do. And me and my older brother start to walk through the scene. Like we're walking through the scene. We're seeing the actors. We're seeing the props being put up. We're seeing makeup done, hair done, shoes tied. We're literally seeing like the making of the next scene. And as I'm walking past them, I see John Leguizamo pass my path. And my brother goes up to John Leguizamo and says, hey John. And John looks up and he goes, oh hey Francisco, how are you? And my brother goes, oh hey, let me introduce you. This is my brother Dennis. And so I shake John Leguizamo's hand and he goes, nice to meet you, Dennis, and walks away. And that, my friends, is how I met John Leguizamo. And then the director comes and says, hey, you guys are part of the film. You guys are painting for the film. Come to lunch, come eat with us, come have dinner. The assistant or somebody in the film crew takes me, my brother, all of the artists that are painting for the movie. And so we walk to the church, which is like a few blocks down from the actual filming place. And they have all the trailers, they have all the cast and crew in the church, all the extras, everybody's eating. And so I grab a plate 
and I start eating guys, they had spaghetti, they had baked salmon, they had fucking, they had a bunch of shit, they had cream cheese, I mean they had cheesecake, they had chocolate cake, like they were on it. And so we get there, we sit down, and like there's this table that's a little bit empty, there's one woman and her son who are there, and so that's pretty much the only table that's empty. So me and my brother go up to her and we're like, hey, is anybody, you know, is this is this table available? And she goes, yeah, sit down. And so we start talking to her and we find out that her son is actually in the movie. Her son plays the younger version of one of the kids, of one of the actors in the film. And so we kind of start talking to her and she tells us everything about how their day was, how it's been filming, that this is her son's um, second role. They said that he did a commercial and that this was his second role and that the directors really liked him and he's very charismatic and he's very like social and so all of these clips are gonna follow along I promise you I'm not just talking to like push it out of my ass on our way back from the lunch I was actually able because they were already finished with the scene uh, I was able to step into where they were filming the first scene and record the little props and the little setup and also record like the the production things that the, the tools and the tech stuff that they, they have and that they were still there because they were at lunch they hadn't packed anything yet so all the tents and the cranes to get the camera angles and everything was like still there I'm just gonna show you guys that real quick so that you guys know what I'm talking about so here is that footage of the filming uh, not of the filming of the movie but the filming that I got of the filming of the movie if that makes sense roll the clip Dennis stop talking so guys I don't know if you guys can see all those cop cars over there and all of those people over there they are filming the John Leguizamo movie right down the road from here. And in a couple of hours, they're going to be on our end of the block. So who knows? Maybe we'll get to talk to John Leguizamo up in here. What, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> um, that's the director over here. Hold on. You should get me talking. <laughs> how you doing? Hey, guy. How are you? Pretty good. Whenever you have time, I know you're busy. No, oh, this is my brother Dennis, by the way. Hey, Dennis, Dennis how are you? <laughs> Whenever you you want, I'll be over there. You just let me know. That way, I could do the tags for you, and I got all the colors. Hey, you want to walk over there now? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, tell them where you're from and what we're doing and stuff, like the art stuff. Right. So hey, we're here on the set of Critical Thinking. It's a really great film about the uh, Jackson High School team who won nationals in 1998. Anyway, we're thinking uh, Francisco is a great piece of. Uh, Graffiti in the background here in Miami on Overtown, and uh, it's going to be the outside of our arcade. All right, guys. So here's a little behind the scenes of the new John Leguizamo movie. Uh, this is the set that they had earlier today. Uh, the scene that they filmed. I don't know what scene it was, but here it is. This is literally it's happening. That's so freaking cool. So this is all the props they were using. I think they were in there looking at the cameras. Pretty fucking cool shit, guys. I've never been on a set of like a legit movie, so this is all so cool. And now, now like today, he's like, oh. And and what you want to do is you want to make every single side the same, right? like that. It's all even. And then okay, this is a trick. So the bottom, what you want to do is like. You want to edge it off at the top, but whatever you do at the top, you're going to do at the bottom, right? Edge it here, you edge it there. Then you can kind of outline a little bit. So after that, we get home and um, we're exhausted and then we realize that we're starving. So we call an Uber and we head to our new favorite restaurant that we've gone to for the second time since I've been here and that is Mr. O1. This is really, really fucking great amazing pizza place that is bougie. It is in Wynwood and it is super expensive. Um, the pizzas alone for like one 13 inch pizza is $20, but it's worth it. I promise you it's worth it. The pizza that I got was called the Fabian or the Scott. I don't remember. It has truffle oil, which I've never had before. Blue cheese. It has a specs, which is another name for prosciutto, which is another name for fancy ham. And then the next day, today, Saturday, we wake up pretty late actually. We woke up like at 10 or 11. We went back to Wynwood. We're like literally on the outskirts. Car ride to Wynwood is like five minutes away. So we're not that far. We're like a mile and a half away from like Overtown, Wynwood, and all of that stuff. We go to this place called Kush. 
Kush is apparently, they have a burger that is the top 52 burger in America. So if you guys are ever in Wynwood, if you guys are ever in Miami, if you guys are ever in Overtown, go to Kush, buy local. I think it's how you pronounce it, either local or locale. Um, but they make really bomb burgers. I had the number 52, not the number 52, one of the top 52 burgers in America, and it was, it was really good, I enjoyed it. So after that, we went back to Wynwood, saw some more art, some more buildings that we hadn't seen. We went to Wynwood Walls, which is a free museum that is in the heart of Wynwood. And so we went through this art museum district type of thing and we saw all of the great art by great artists and got some really good footage and b-roll of the art in the Wynwood wall. So I'm just gonna show you guys a montage of that right now because I don't know how else to present it other than it's fucking amazing and the art there is so fucking inspiring and so fucking cool but check that out. Once we saw the museum, we left the museum around 5.30, 6 o'clock if I'm correct, and we were gonna go to Brickletown. Brickletown? Brickle. It's called Brickle, not Brickletown. I don't know why I'm adding town at the end of it. We were gonna go to Brickle, and my brother saw this bar across the street from the Windward Walls Museum. So he was like, hey, there's happy hour right now. Do you wanna go get a few drinks? And I'm like, ah, my social battery is like really low, you guys. Like, honestly, let me tell you that I am not a social person. I'm not a social butterfly. My older brother is, though. My older brother will talk to anybody that's next to him. And this is why it's bad to sit next to my brother if you see him and you don't want him to talk to you. Don't sit next to him because he will say hi to you and he will talk to you. And I don't know how the fuck he does it. I was just like sitting there minding my own business, having a drink enjoying my time relaxing finally from the last three days I have been around people so much and I've been in a crabby mood today because like I just I want to be alone and like it's not anybody's fault like it's nobody's to blame like it's just the way I am my social battery battery was like at negative 5,000 and so I'm like sitting there at the bar this fucker decides to strike up a conversation with a couple next to us and so I'm like sitting there bored just like drinking my second drink which at this point was a strawberry mo mojito and so I'm like you know what I'm feeling a little tipsy a little bored I'm gonna go talk to them too so I jump into the conversation and guys Guys, we met the best fucking couple. Let me tell you guys that I have never met a couple that I've connected with on a friends level. Like I connected with this couple. The husband and the wife are so amazing and we got to know them so well and we talked for three hours. Like we got there like around 5.30 and as soon as we got there my brother was like on let's talk mode. We talked to them for like three hours and I talked to the husband but by myself and I talked with his lovely beautiful wife by myself and I, I really got to like hear their perspective on life and you know their experiences as a couple and their experiences in love. It inspired me that like strangers can bring out the best in you sometimes and like 
being in this bubble that I've kept myself in for so long because I'm such an anti-social person has sort of deprived me from the experiences that I could be experiencing with just people in my own fucking town, like in my own city. Like if I was the type of person that my older brother is, I would be having a greater experience being 27 and m making friends and talking to people and getting to know people and, and, and I got some really amazing advice from them and they're great people and we exchange information and when I go to San Diego, I'm going to meet up with them hopefully and when they come to Phoenix, they will do the same with us and we've just, we've, we've made friends for, I don't know if it's for life, for however long it is, I, I, I myself made two really good friends tonight. And so that was really awesome, and I already love them. Like, I don't know if that's odd to say, or if it's because I'm like tipsy or drunk, but like, I really like them. I like them a lot, and like, I couldn't help but soak in all of their advice. And they're a little bit more older than me. They had a lot to say, and I don't know. I feel like I'm really gonna try to open myself up to talking to people more of all ages and, and all walks and types of life because I realized today, and not only today, but I realized being with my brother the last three days and talking to this amazing couple for three hours. I, You guys know me. My family knows me. My cousin knows me. People who know me personally know that I don't talk for longer than like 10 minutes. So for this couple to like have me wanting to like tell them my life story and for them to do the same to me it was like a really great bonding experience that like i can't i can't put into words like you ever meet somebody and like just know in your head like you are supposed to like i'm saying like a lot you were supposed to meet these people you were supposed to talk to them for whatever reason for whatever it was you and these two people had to connect. And I don't know what the point of it is, and maybe there isn't a point to why we met, but they instilled inspiration in me, and they instilled courage, and I don't know, I'm gonna take everything they told me, I'm gonna take all their advice and, and, and hold it in my heart, and try to live my life the way that they do, because it's amazing. Like, if you live life the way that my older brother does, and they do, and they travel all the time. My brother travels all the time, and, and he gets to do all these cool things and experience new things and talk to people about their life stories because he initiates conversation and he talks to people. I want that. I feel like that would make my life happy. I feel like I'm in this bubble and I'm not happy in my own bubble because I make myself miserable and I really just want to get out of my comfort zone. That was pretty much my day, my last two days that I've been here. If you guys really want to see pictures and all that stuff, I, I took pictures with a couple um, and I'm gonna post them on my Instagram, so if you guys are watching this video, those pictures are most likely up. And if you guys just wanna see the other pictures from all my other adventures in Wynwood and Miami and Overtown over the last three or four days, you guys can go look at those pictures too. Aside from that, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was really long, but there was a, a lot jam-packed the last two days. I did a lot the last two days. I am like physically exhausted. I am, my social battery is like at zero right now. Tomorrow I have a four hour flight from Miami to Denver. I have an eight hour layover in Denver from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. God knows if I'm gonna sleep. I don't think I'm gonna sleep tomorrow night. And then at 8 a.m. I board the plane to come back to Phoenix and I get to Phoenix at 11 a.m. So I'm gonna have like 12, 13, 14 hours of just not being anywhere. Like, I'm not gonna be anywhere. I'm not gonna have a place to sleep. I'm gonna be on a, either a plane or at a lounge somewhere or at a fucking airport seating area for eight hours. Like, I, I, I wanna prepare myself for this. So I told myself I was gonna go home. It's really fucking early. I'm like regretting it as I'm saying this cause like, he's probably out there enjoying talking to people, but like, I'm tired. I'm really tired. I had a lot of fun though. I had a lot of fun, but I just wanna lay in bed and watch YouTube videos and <laughs> sleep. So like, I don't know. I know I should explore. I know I should, be out there with him and enjoy Miami because like I'm not gonna come back for a long time but like my social battery is at an all-time low like I'm just kind of like sad not sad I'm just kind of like I'm, like I'm a little dead on the inside I'm not gonna lie so I'm just gonna sit here watch some YouTube videos go to sleep wake up early we gotta finish finish the painting tomorrow 
and then we're gonna head to the airport later on in the evening to catch our flights back home. Look out for that vlog. I don't know when it's gonna come out. Maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday. I have a lot of footage to go through. Aside from that, I hope that you guys enjoyed this vlog. Uh, if you guys did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment down below. What is your favorite city that you've been to and what made it so special? Why is it your favorite? I wanna know. Aside from that, you guys, I hope that you guys are having a good day and a good week and a good month and a good year and a good life. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.